So what I've done is I've picked up A and B arbitrarily and I've allocated them on two different days. Now we have to avoid two things which we have already understood. One, we cannot have the same three courses on multiple occasions. And two, the same pair of subjects cannot occur more than twice because that will again lead to type one, which you have understood. Hello, everyone. So I had this wonderful question asked to me by one of our students a few days back. Uh, there was a plan to start uploading YouTube videos, but that was after a few weeks. But once I encountered this problem, I was compelled to create a video on this. It's that good a problem. Before I start discussing this, I have to mention that this is a problem which would never appear in any kind of aptitude test as it is. But some structural ideas and the way to structure it, those kind of things could be useful from general visualization and solving any kind of problem which comes even close to this. The student who sent me the doubt also confirmed to me later that it was asked in a course of a premier B school and he just liked the problem so he shared it to me. So without further ado, let me quickly get into the solution. First of all, the question is obviously from the combinatorics module. There is a degree of constraint based allocation which we have to analyze upon. Hopefully those who are watching this video have read the problem statement. Let me stress on the important points once. So there are five courses. The context is allocation of these courses on five days of a week. Each day, there should be three different courses allocated and each course must be allocated thrice. So there's an obvious parity in terms of days and courses. In terms of days, we have five cross three, that is 15 slots. Same in terms of courses, five courses each thrice making 15 slots. But the main constraint is no course can be repeated on any day, implying three times a course is allocated must be on three different days. So I've just briefly taken down these two points. Each of the five days, we will have three courses and each of the five courses should appear once on three different days. So the way we are going to visualize is using a five cross three grid, each column indicating a day and each cell in a column is an allocation. I'm also going to use A, B, C, D, E to indicate the courses, but please note the steps before I start the process. First of all, I'm broadly going to try and find the different types of allocations, which are feasible by allocation. I mean the courses allocated in, you may call it five different baskets, each basket being one of the days. So we are just focusing on the corresponding selection of courses. Then I'm going to find the number of ways each type of allocation can be constructed. Finally, we are going to arrange the selected courses for each day on the three available slots for the days. So when I say corresponding selection of courses, I don't care which column indicates which day. I also don't care about the order in which the three courses are selected on any given day. These concerns will be handled later. The first query I had was, can I select three specific courses together on three different days? Since each course is to occur thrice, what if I select three specific courses for three different days? So what I'm going to do is I'm going to pick up randomly three courses, A, B, and C, and allocate it together on three different days. Now, as you can see that D and E have not been selected at all so far, but we have only two days left. So we can't meet the constraint of allocating D on three different days or that of doing the same with E. So basically we can ignore this. And now if three specific courses cannot be allocated thrice together. So my next query was, could we do that twice together? So let's try this. So I again allocated A, B, C together, but now on two different days, not on three days here, as you can see that there are three days left and D E are not allocated at all so far which automatically implies that each of these three days must have a D and must have an E. So on these three days, we have one slot left after this allocation. So once you allocated D and E on each of the days, each of the remaining three days, we have one slot remaining on each of these days. And each of A, B, C has one allocation left. Since which day, which slot, etc., doesn't matter as of now, Let's just and randomly assign A, B and C on these slots. So if you do this, now this seems like a feasible allocation. So before we move to the other possibilities or other types, let's make few observations which can distinguish this type of allocation with the rest of whatever we can figure out. So firstly, when we allocate three courses together on two days, 
the remaining two courses are automatically allocated on the remaining three days. So when we allocated three courses together, for this instance, ABC together twice, the remaining two courses, that is D and E, got allocated together on three different occasions, on three different days. Also, if we notice the courses in pairs, so for example, some of the pairs like AB, AC and BC have occurred twice together. So on this day, AB, on this day as well, AB, AC, AC, BC, BC. I hope you can see that. So I'm noticing this in pairs now. One pair is, that is DE occurs together thrice and few pairs, for example, A and D as a pair, A and E as a pair, B, D pair, B, E pair, C, D, C, these pairs have occurred once. So we can clarify or classify this type as three courses together twice. Now, what if no three courses occur more than once together? If this is feasible, then that must surely be a distinct type to this one. So let's use a fresh grid for this. So here we cannot allocate a specific set of three subjects or courses on more than one occasion. But what about a pair of subjects or a pair of courses? We noticed in the last type that some pairs occurred once together, some twice together, and some even thrice together. A query should arise in our minds as to whether it's possible for a pair to never occur together. Whether it is possible that, that a particular pair doesn't occur together. So let's pick A and B for this experiment. If we allocate A on three days, it should be pretty obvious that the three allocations of B will coincide with E at least once because we have a total of five days. So whichever three days we place B, it has to occur with A or coincide with the allocation of A on at least one day. So we can safely ignore the case where two courses or a particular pair of courses never occurs together. It can occur once, it, it can occur once, it can occur twice, it can occur thrice. We have already encountered it in the previous type itself. Now note that uh, if we allocate a specific pair on three days, it will lead to the previous type. So let me just show this quickly. So suppose I allocate AB as a pair on three different days. Now we cannot allocate a specific set of three courses on more than one occasion any which way because that is something we started as the previous type. So the three days that we have here already allocated as AB, I cannot have the same subject on any two of these three remaining slots, right? So let me arbitrarily place the remaining three subjects one at a time. So I place C, D and E. So now A and B are allocated thrice each, as you can see. So the remaining two days will each have C, D, E. So that is basically type one, where a specific set of three subjects, in this case, C, D, E being those three subjects, which are occurring on two different days together. So we can ignore that case. So now that we understood all of this, let's start by allocating two specific sub courses on two arbitrary days. So what I've done is I've picked up A and B arbitrarily and I've allocated them on two different days. Now we have to avoid two things, which we have already understood. One, we cannot have the same three courses on multiple occasions. And two, the same pair of subjects cannot occur more than twice because that will again lead to type one, which you have understood. So in order to avoid that, so how do we assign these two boxes? Now this is pretty simple. So if we target to avoid just point number one, so obviously we cannot have the same course on both of these boxes. So let me just assign C and D. Now, once I've made this assignment, I hope you can see that up till now, I have not used the course E at all. I have allocated A some, uh, somewhere, I've allocated D somewhere, I've allocated C and D, but I have not allocated E at all. And we have only three days remaining. The two days are packed. The two days are completely packed, all the slots gone. So obviously one of the E's has to go to each of the remaining three days. That is pretty obvious, I hope. Also, you should notice that there is one allocation of A and one allocation of B remaining. And to keep the point number two in check, this is the thing I asked you to avoid again. So point number two, the same pair of subjects should not occur more than twice. So I should not allocate the one allocation of A and one allocation of B on the same day. So it is pretty obvious that I have to allocate A and B on two different days, right? So again, at this point, which day this is and all that really doesn't matter. This is just to understand the different types of allocation that we can have and just allocate C and D in the remaining spot. So at this point, you can check that we have already completed three allocations of A, we have, we have completed three allocations of B, three allocations of E. So only 
the the only courses left to be allocated are C and D in the remaining slots, right? So let's start by these two. Pretty obvious that we cannot have the same course, and we have C and D remaining. So one of them has to be C, another has to be D. And out of these two, there will be one C and one D for obvious reasons. So this is definitely a different type of allocation from type one. And beyond these two, we cannot have any further types. So now let's first find the number of ways these allocations can be done in each type. So first of all, what I'm going to do is I'm going to take it step by step. So I'm going to bring back the reanimation of each of the types so that you can recall easily uh, the steps that we took. And for each of these cases, I'm going to use permutation and combination, basic counting principles to figure it out. So let's start with type one. So if you remember type one is that particular scenario in which we have three specific subjects on two different days. So first we started with something like this, right? Now, remember this was a random allocation. If we have to think about how many ways we can make this type of allocation, we have to think about our choices. So what choices do we have? So first of all, what are we doing? We are selecting three subjects from the available five courses that we have, right? Three courses from the available five courses. And once we have made those selection of three courses, we are allocating those three together on two different days out of five available days. So one, we are selecting three out of five courses and correspondingly, we are selecting two out of five available days. So simply 5C3 into 5C2, that is the first step done. Now, once we make this allocation, if you remember the D and the E, which are the remaining two subjects. So this is not a selection anymore. Once you have made a selection of ABC, so once you have selected three courses at the first step, so that is this 5C3, the remaining two subjects are that they are remaining. So there is no choice with you. So that is automatically happening. So whenever there's something automatically happening, you will have only one way to do it. You don't have the choice anymore. So the D and E, those subjects are automatically selected. And also once you have allocated ABC on two different days, the D and E gets automatically allocated once each on each of the remaining days. So again, you don't have a choice. So for D and E, the selection itself doesn't have a choice. And even the selection of days doesn't have a choice. So basically one into one, you can ignore this step also, but this is the right way to think so that you don't make a mistake in any kind of problem. Now, once this is done, if you remember the last thing that we did is allocate the one A, one B and one C arbitrarily on these three spots. So how many ways can we do that? You can simply think in this way. So we have A, B, C, three different units to be arranged on three different places. Linear arrangement, you can treat it in that way. And that will be three factorial ways. So correspondingly, you have three factorial different ways. So you have a total of 600 different allocations of this type where three specific courses will be repeating on two days and automatically the rest of it will happen. So this is the allocation. Again, remember, we have not completed this. What about type two? So type two, we started by selecting two subjects for two different days. So we started with something like this, right? AB, AB for two different days. So again, couple of things to do. You have to select two subjects. <coughs> Excuse me. You have to select two subjects out of the available five and you have to allocate them to two days. So for that, you need to select two days out of the available five. So you have a 5C2 cross 5C2. Now, once we did this, the next step was we cannot have the same subject on these two spots. So we have to select two different subjects for these two spots, but that is not it. Once we make that selection, we can arrange them in two different ways. So for example, here, what I did was I selected C and D out of C, D, E. So we had three choices of selecting two subjects for these two spots. And then I allocated C here and D here. I could have done the reverse also. I could have placed D here and C here. So first I need to select two subjects for these two spots in three C two ways. And then I have to arrange those two on these two spots in two factorial ways. So that is the next step. So you take two sub or select two subjects out of the three remaining and you arrange them in these two spots. So now it is done. The next thing was the allocation of E. Now E obviously can be arranged in only one of one C each on each of the remaining three days. And also you don't have a choice with E if you remember. So A, B, C, D. So once you have selected two subjects here in 5C2, in the first 5C2, and then you have selected the two out of the remaining three. So you are automatically left with one subject, right? So it doesn't matter which subject is left out, but you are left with one subject in any of these cases. So that gets automatically selected. And obviously it gets allocated once on each day. So again, the allocation of E should be simply into one, right? I mean, if you do into one, into one again, 
or you can simply ignore this. So it's basically you don't have a choice anymore. So it is automatically happening. But now be careful. So now a couple of things that we did. One, we started by allocating the remaining A and the remaining B. So here you have to be a little cautious. Don't rush yourself. So if you remember, I just allocated one A here and one B here because I, I could not allocate A and B together because that would have led back to type one. So one A here and one B here. But here I don't have to make a selection of the subject. These are the two subjects which we already selected here and were allocated on these two days, right? So the selection of subject is not important. But what is important is if you notice at this stage, you have three different days on which the A and B, the one A and the one B can be allocated. So you can, you can actually do this in two different ways. I'll, I'll discuss both the ways. So I'll discuss the way, the, the one way which I'm not, uh, you know, typed it down here. So one, what you can do is for A, you have three choice and correspondingly for B, you have two choice. So you have three into two, six choices together for A and B. Or what you can do is what I've done here is first I've selected two days out of these three days. And then I have arranged the A and B on those two days in two factorial days. So for example, if I select this day and this day, whatever I've done here, so that will be three C two out of these three. And once I've selected these two days, a here, B here, or B here, A here. So that is two factorial options are available to me. And uh, you can check 3C2 into two factorial is also six. So there is no problem in, uh, you know, you'll, you'll never have a problem in calculation of the value as, as long as your logic is correct. So the AB allocation is done and also the E allocation is done. So we can take a head count at this, at, at this point in type two. So we have already allocated three A's, we have already allocated three B's and we have already allocated three E's. So the remaining thing is the C and the D. So if you remember the CD, one is these two come together here that automatically has to happen again cd you don't have to select again that was already selected in this 3c2 so those are the two subjects and only one of these three days so what i mean by these three days is this day this day and this day out of these three days only one of the three days will have two slots left right because two of the days one has a another has b so whichever day has two slots remaining C and D together will, will, will go into that day, right? So that will happen automatically. Hence, there is no option with you. So again, into one basically. And now the remaining two spots, you have one C and one D to allocate. Obviously, you can do it in two factorial ways. So you can take a calculation of this. 5C2 is 10. This is also 10. 10 cross 10, that is 100. 3C2 is 3. 2 factorial is 2. So 3 into 2 is 6. This is also 3 into 2 is 6. And this is 2. 6 cross 6 36 cross 2 72. And then this 100. So 7200. So in total, you have a 7,800 ways in which the courses can be assigned to these days, meeting the given condition. But our job is not complete. There is one step remaining. Since the problem statement, if you remember, asked for the number of schedules that we can form. So we must also think of the number of ways the three selected subject on each day that uh, can be arranged amongst themselves. So for example, in this allocation, let me take an arbitrary one. So for example, in this allocation, on this day, we have selected A, B and C as the three courses. But what we have not decided so far is in which order will the courses be conducted on that, and on that particular day. So there will be some sort of sequencing also, right? Because you're concerned about the schedule of the, day, uh, of the week. So the three subjects on these three, on, on, on any of the day has to be ordered among themselves, something like that. But this part is pretty easy and straightforward. On each of these 7,800 allocations that we have, each day has three different subjects because that was the constraint, right? So if each of the day has three different subjects, then each of the day can be arranged or ordered in three factorial or six ways among themselves. So for each day, we have correspondingly six ways of arranging the courses implying for each of the 7,800 allocations, we will have six cross six cross six cross six cross six, five days, total of six to the power five ways of forming the schedule, giving our final answer as 7,800 cross six to the power five. So I hope you enjoyed the solution. Uh, this is a very interesting problem. And hence, as I said, I was compelled to uh, sort of create the video earlier than I planned to upload, uh, start uploading some YouTube videos that is in the plan. So we will be uploading a lot of videos um, from the upcoming weeks, uh, not starting straight away, but after a few, two, three weeks later, we will start regularly uploading a lot of videos. So subscribe to our channel if you are new. And if you are already part of our channel, then do leave a comment below in terms of what sort of videos would you like to, would, would you like us to upload? Um, in terms of this question, again, uh, don't expect the question as it is. 
uh, in an aptitude test. But there are definitely a lot of takeaways from this particular question, which you can uh, utilize when you're solving any sort of combinatorics problem. Uh, the main idea of combinatorics problem is to structure your thinking and analyze it with the constraints in mind. So whatever constraints you have, try to simplify it and try to objectively figure out whatever they're looking for. So the objective should be there in the mind and the constraint should be there in the mind. I mean, sounds very simple, but it needs a bit of practice for that. So I hope you enjoyed the video. And uh, if you did, uh, do hit the like button. It helps us in the ranking algorithm, of course. And uh, share it among your friends, fellow aspirants, anybody who likes maths in general. Thank you for joining in and have a wonderful day ahead.